Okay, this is just something extra for you. A seven-minute bonus broadcast from my second show, True Stories with Seth Andrews. If you like what you hear, you can subscribe on all major podcast apps, like and share, and help me get the word out there. Today's true story runs about seven minutes. True Stories with Seth Andrews. Enjoy. I'm Seth Andrews, and what you're about to hear is a true story. The year was 1989. There was a farmer. His name was Robert Reed, and he was outside working his land. This was just outside of Burr Oak, Michigan. And he looked up into the sky, and he saw something strange. There was a circular group of floating objects over his farmland. It turned out to be a cluster of weather balloons. And attached to those balloons was a Super 8 film camera. Well, Robert wasn't sure what to make of all of this, but he was concerned because local farmers had been getting into trouble with the police because marijuana had been growing around the edges of some of their crops, and the police took a very dim view of that. Were these law enforcement surveillance balloons looking for weed? Well, whatever was happening, Robert decided the right thing to do was to go ahead and turn everything over to the local police. And they took the Super 8 camera, and they had the film developed, and what they saw was sobering. The footage showed two men dressed in black, and they were standing over a body. The two standing men had a crest on their jackets, the lifeless man's face covered with a mysterious substance, the skin obviously blemished with something. The camera swirled back and forth, up and down, until finally it began to ascend, revealing a third man who was running away from the scene as fast as he could run. The camera continued to drift upward into the sky, revealing warehouses and parking garages. This was obviously somewhere in Chicago. The wide overhead vantage even revealed the lights of the elevated Chicago trains, and detectives finally pinned down the location as an alley somewhere in the Fulton River District. And so they contacted local police. They said, hey, have you received any homicide reports in that area? But no records or reports were found. Michigan police were looking at this strange, disturbing snuff film And they surmised it was some kind of a gang murder, maybe a cult killing. And with resources played out, they handed all the footage over to the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, where federal pathologists revealed another disturbing detail. That dead body was long dead. It was already rotting. This murder case went on and on And on, one month turned into three, turned into six months, then a year, two years, and the dead man had still not been identified. The killers had not been identified, the case becoming a cold case. And so, with all other options exhausted and desperate for leads, the FBI distributed flyers, and those flyers had stills from the Super 8 Film And they passed these out throughout the city of Chicago, specifically focusing in the region that they had pinpointed. And some of those flyer distribution locations included schools. And inside one of those schools, there was an art student and he saw the image and he had a flash of recognition. He knew what this was. And he called the number on the flyer. He contacted the police and said, I've seen this place. I've seen these men. I know what happened. Well, that Super 8 film footage that had accidentally gotten away from its handlers that floated far into the sky and ultimately landed in that Michigan farmer's field, it was not a snuff film. It was not documented murder. It was 
a music video. Oh, the footage looked suspicious. It was grainy and desaturated and blurry. Some might say even sloppy. Certainly hard to focus on, but you could see that man. Black jacket, black pants, white shirt, splayed out upon the concrete as that overhead camera came up and down and up and down and spun around. The man certainly looked dead, but he wasn't dead. He wasn't a victim. He was a lead singer. And his face was not rotten. It wasn't covered in decay. He was covered with cornstarch and chocolate syrup. This whole thing was a filmed artistic exercise by a rock band in the decade of the music video. This was the era of MTV, and every band with a new song had to have a new music video. This was theater that just happened to look like murder, which resulted in a lot of men and women in badges also wearing red faces. While the film crew had once been chasing a rogue weather balloon, law enforcement had been chasing its own tail. The band had gotten another camera, and they shot that scene again with new equipment. And when that scene was done, when this music video was done and released on MTV in 1989, this artist went back to his art, performing for audiences worldwide, returning to the studio to record more albums. The man who today is a household name and a rock legend, the man investigated for two years by the Michigan police and the FBI as a murder victim was Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. Oh, yeah, that is a true story. True Stories Podcast.com.